Hello, everyone. This is Ben Newman. I'm currently in New York, but by the time you see this video, I will be on vacation in Costa Rica. So that's two good reasons. I was not able to be there in person, but I hope you'll accept this pre-recorded demo video as a substitute for my physical presence. Tonight I'm going to be talking about two different performance optimization techniques that you can use to speed up page load times in Meteor apps. The first technique has been available ever since Meteor 1.3, and the second technique has become available only recently in the beta releases of Meteor 1.5. To demonstrate these two techniques, I've created a simple React-based Meteor app that ports React and then registers a Meteor startup hook that logs how long it took for the startup hook to fire, and then renders um, some React elements into a container that you can see over here in the, media, uh, the main.html file on the right. So this render async function is, well, an async function. And you might wonder why that is, since it's not really doing anything async. Later, we're going to introduce some async operations and I wanted to go ahead and make it an async function so that the performance characteristics are obviously the same before and after. Once render async is done, we do a little more logging about how long it took and then the sum of the startup time and the rendering time. So what does that look like in the browser? Well, here it is. It's uh, not that exciting to look at if we hold down Command-Shift-R to reload without using the browser cache. There's a little bit of flicker because React has to load and render this component into the DOM. The more interesting thing is how long this took. So um, getting to the startup hook took 900 milliseconds here. And that's a lot, although this is in development. So you know it's not minified or anything like that. Render async uh, took um, not very much time at all, about 30 milliseconds, just to do the rendering because all the JavaScript has already been loaded. And so if you don't like this trade-off, and especially if that um, startup time is much larger in your more complicated Meteor app, what can you do? Well, one technique, the first technique, the one that's been available for a while, is if you notice that you have imports at the top level of your module that you're not actually using at the top level of your module, you can push them down into the functions where they're actually used. So what's the point of this? React and React DOM and all of their dependencies will still be included in the initial JavaScript bundle, so they still have to be downloaded. But uh, if we don't call render async, or we don't call it until later, we can, at the very least, avoid the execution cost of importing those modules for the first time. So that should speed up uh, the startup time a little bit uh, and slow down the rendering time, or the time it takes to call render async, um, by about the same amount. And you. Uh, might be raising an eyebrow at the fact that I've put these import declarations inside of a function. Technically, import declarations are only legal at the top level of modules. Uh, because of the way Meteor compiles import declarations, this is legal, but if it bothers you, then we can definitely just use CommonJS. We can even use destructuring variable declarations here to make the syntax match as close as possible. So this code is functionally equivalent to what we had before, except that we don't actually import React and React DOM until we call the render async function. Sorry, I'm still getting over a bit of a cold, which is why my throat is scratchy. So did that do us any favors? Well. Reloading without the cache again, we can see that the Meteor startup hook is now down to more like 700 rather than 900 milliseconds. <coughs> and render async took about 100 milliseconds instead of about 20 milliseconds. So 
that's the right direction for, for both of those. Um, if you uh, are diligent about taking your imports and turning them into requires and putting them in the places where you're actually using the imported symbols, then you can reap even more benefits across a larger code base. But this is all we have to work with right now. Okay, so if uh, that feels like progress, it probably doesn't feel like much progress, right? We're still paying the cost of downloading all of that code. We're just executing it a little bit later. So what we would really like to do, if possible, is wait until we really need React and React DOM to even fetch the code from the server and evaluate those modules. So that is the second technique that has only recently become available as part of Meteor 1.5. It's implemented um, according to a proposal for the ECMAScript specification that will probably land in ES 2018 for uh, dynamic imports. So there will be a built-in import function that um, works a little bit like require in that you pass it a module identifier string, but instead of returning the exports object for the imported module, it returns a promise for that exports object. And the promise is important because it's able to abstract um, the work of fetching the code over the network if you don't already have it, and also evaluating the module and returning the exports object. So this won't work as written, but because we're in an async function, we can actually just await the promise. And so, for instance, this await expression uh, evaluates when the promise returned by import react DOM is fulfilled, and it evaluates to the same exports object that we had before with require, so the destructuring assignment still works, and render ends up being a function that we can call below. So I claim that this code is also functionally equivalent to the original code. Um, and before I show you how that works, I'm going to go back to the require version just so that we can take a look at the network and see that I've sorted the packages by their size. The modules package is the one that contains all of your application node modules, and it's pretty big. Again, this is development, not production. There's no minification happening. 331 kilobytes. So remember that number. And now let's make the import changes again. Wait for it to reload. So the first thing to notice here Let me close this and reopen it. The first thing to notice here is that when we reload, the modules package has gone from more than 300k to about 75k. So depending on your network speed, that will be more or less significant. We're doing all of this over localhost, so network is not actually slow at all. But that is a, a massive savings in code size. So. At the very least, we've managed to slim down the initial JavaScript bundle quite a bit. And what effect does that have on our startup time? Well, <coughs> Meteor Startup now takes only about 500 milliseconds to fire. And of course, render async takes a lot longer. You know, it was 100 milliseconds before, and now it's more than 500 milliseconds. And of course, that's because it is now having to do the work of fetching that code from the server. So. Um, I've been reloading without the cache a lot here. If I reload with the cache, you can see that uh, the cost of downloading the initial bundle is not as urgent, uh, not, not as uh, problematic, and indeed meter startup fires sooner. Render async still takes the same amount of time though, and that's because in development we're not doing any caching of dynamically fetched modules. But of course, we want to cache those modules that we've fetched because if we do it right, we'll never have to request the same version of the same module again uh, for the same client. To demonstrate how that works, I've actually deployed this very app with um, the current version of the code to Galaxy. I did this before the talk. And 
And so you can see this works the same way, or at least looks the same. And behind the scenes, it's logging the same kind of information. Um, this is the first time that I've requested this web page from this browser. So there's no caching of render async. Uh, but because we've minified things, the initial JavaScript bundle is a lot smaller. So the startup hook fires a lot sooner. But if I reload, you'll see that render async now takes uh, just north of 100 milliseconds, which is a lot less. And that's all thanks to the fact that we are caching the modules that we've dynamically fetched from the server. So if you switch to dynamic imports and you start loading your code later rather than as part of the initial JavaScript bundle, in development that will sometimes appear to uh, make performance worse, especially if you end up calling um, the import function very soon after page load. However, when you deploy the same code to production, thanks to this caching system, the dynamic imports become almost free after the first time they are requested. And um, so let's try that actually with the uh, inspector not open. Um, there is some overhead to having the Chrome DevTools open while you run your app. So if you close them and redo uh, your, your test and then, and then reopen them, the uh, timings that you'll get will often be much better. As you can see here, um, the combined time for Meteor Startup and Render is only 155 milliseconds. Um, so that's pretty good uh, since we started with um, a combined time of well more than a second. So I hope you agree that that's all pretty cool and that at the very least in Meteor 1.5 you're going to have better tools for deciding when JavaScript is loaded and executed. Um, to recap, the two techniques that I've suggested for speeding up page load times are to inline your imports uh, so that you don't evaluate modules until you need them. And also consider taking modules that aren't really needed during page load uh, out of the initial bundle by using dynamic imports um, so that they get fetched dynamically from the server later on. So uh, if you want to get involved in this effort, there is a pull request uh, for Meteor 1.5. There's already a lot of activity on it and lots of ideas. Uh, for how Meteor could be faster in production. It's not just about dynamic imports, it's also things like making jQuery and underscore, excuse me, making jQuery and underscore optional. Gosh, uh, I thought I was better, but apparently not. Uh, anyway, if you look at this pull request and get inspired, uh, feel free to leave a comment and I will be happy to give you guidance about how you might go about contributing to this awesome effort to make Meteor fast again. <laughs>